This week on Fish Head, John shares exciting topwater tactics for catching a mixed bag of large and smallmouth bass on the most legendary popper of them all. There, just got him. Looked down at my trolling motor. <laughs> I heard him. <laughs> I was able to just get on him. That's one thing about having that drag turned down and a stiff enough rod to deal with this, even when you're fishing with spinning tackle, is you gotta be able to do what I just did right there and it worked just fine. That's smallmouth. Now here's the thing, I'm fishing a lake today and this is pretty cool because there are smallmouth in here and there's largemouth in here. And you know, you get to this midsummer period and what I'm fishing here, I'm, I'm thinking largemouth this morning, okay? But here's what happens. The fish will start to mix together a little bit because what I'm doing right now, nice little smallmouth to start our day. What I'm doing right now is fishing an area that is adjacent to very deep water. Okay, when I'm casting in here, you might feel like I'm casting shallow. It's pretty deep in there. That drop happens really quick. And what happens is at this time of the year, a lot of these bass, they all end up mixing together a little bit as long as they're both in the body of water you're fishing because both species are looking at a little bit deeper water. Now the bass, they'll come up, the, the smallmouth, they'll come up early and feed and then they'll slide off into deeper water. Where the largemouth, they'll come up a little early to feed as well, right along with them, but then they'll slide just to that first weed break. There's a lot of topwater baits out there that a guy could choose to use when you're doing this. But let me tell you, I mean, my favorite, hands down, is a Rebel Pop R. It's, I mean, probably the best selling topwater bait of all time. It's phenomenal. How many baits? Rebel is sold in this pop bar model. And even more impressive is how many fish it's caught for everybody over the years. Now, here's the deal. You could use a, a hula popper, um, but I think when I'm fishing in a scenario where I'm fishing out over deeper water and I know I'm trying to get smallmouth mixed in with, with largemouth, I think the smaller bait, this quarter ounce Rebel pop bar, is a little bit better way to go. Wow, Ooh, that one just attacked it. <laughs> Good fish too. Just made a little move here. Made one little move, came down into what I looked at as some calmer water, down the way a little bit. Good largemouth, look at that fish. Look at that fish. That's what we're chasing right there. Good fish. Look at that, awesome fish. Let's see. Get that guy unhooked. And, but look at the shoreline here. This is what's interesting at this time of the year. You don't necessarily need to be in the weeds that you always think of with bass at this time of the year. Because what happens is these fish, good fish, get out of here, buddy. These fish disperse. And I mean, that's deep water fish right there. That's out over deep water that I got that fish. The boat's in 16 feet of water. There's really no vegetation there. There's some stuff under the surface, but it's not the same type of stuff that you're used to thinking about when you think about a bass. Because you're so used to thinking about having to see the vegetation and say, there's where, there's where it's gonna be. Here, sometimes it's just about getting out over some weeds in deeper water off that weed edge and then finding some calmer water. I think that might have been a little bit of my issue this morning. I caught a couple small fish, but you know what I think? I think there was just enough wind that the top water just wasn't as effective. That is, wow, boy, I like that spot. I mean, I, it, it was just, it looked just great. It was just calmer, smallmouth, good smallmouth. 
it was calmer. It just looked like a really good area. Look at that, really good smallmouth. Just gonna see if I can get him on the upswing, got him. Look at that, awesome fish. Man, <laughs> that is cool stuff right there. Settle down there, buddy. We'll get you unhooked, get you back in the water. Look at that. Top water smallmouth. Holy moly. Boat sitting in 18 feet of water. I'll bet you I pulled that fish out of 12 feet, 12 to 15 feet in there. Just goes to show you that these fish, especially when you find those sweet spots, and that one there felt like a sweet spot to me because it was so calm, it just felt like they were gonna be able to find it. And that guy did, awesome smallmouth. Man, pound for pound, these fish, do they ever fight, man. That's awesome. That's good stuff. I just love catching smallmouth bass. I love catching bass in general, but man, when a smallmouth attacks a topwater, man, this area just looks perfect because it's so flat, calm in here that I'm able to get them, I get their attention from further away. You know, when you're in, when you're in waves, one of the things that happens is you gotta land closer to them. You gotta pop it on the top right past them. When you find those calmer water spots, what it does is it gives them a chance to find it from a little bit further away. And that fish, I don't know how long he may have been seeing it, but he came out of pretty deep water. And I know this, it was where it was calm and it enabled him to find it. And that's just key. There he is, got him that time. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. Gotta catch up to him, he's coming at me hat hard. Coming for deep water. Look at that fish. Really nice one. Really nice fish, this is a smallmouth I think. Oh, this is a good fish. I think it's a smallmouth. I came over here to this rocky stuff. Yeah, it's a big smallie, big smallmouth. I came over here to this harder bottom, out deeper again, looking to catch a smallmouth here to wrap our day up, and this is a big fish. Oh, this is a big fish. Hang on, buddy. I mean, I haven't even gotten him to a point yet where I could try to grab him. This is a big fish. Just stay hooked up. Wow. This is a giant smallmouth. Look at this fish. Oh, hang on there, buddy. Hang on here. Look at this. Got him. Had to do it that way because he was partially hooked in the bottom lip. Giant smallmouth. Wait till I show you this fish. Let me get him unhooked and then I'll show him to you. Holy smokes. Got him. Look at this smallie. Look at that. Giant fish. I mean, not a giant, giant, but an awful nice smallmouth for a a Minnesota lake. I mean, we're not talking a Mille Lacs Lake where we're growing giants, okay? We're talking a small Minnesota lake and fish like that one right there, man, that's a big fish in a body of water like this. Wow, awesome fish. What a fight too. You know, that's a cool thing. So quick explanation before we call it a day. You know, today I looked at multiple areas where I felt like I could catch fish, okay? From, from trying some sparse weeds near hard bottom and then fishing hard bottom. The smallmouth came wherever there was hard bottom. So that's the first thing. But again, they're all mixed up. They're all mixed up in that, that mid-range water. You don't necessarily have to be shallow, but you'll wanna try shallow because you're gonna get some fish shallow. But here's the thing. You can fish over these hard bottom areas out a little bit deeper and you can count on fish in the top water and still be in bed. I mean, that fish right there, he bit in 12 feet of water. He shouldn't be biting a top water in 12 feet of water by conventional wisdom. You should be having to fish a crankbait or you should be having to fish something like that, you know, a, a spinner bait. But you can get them on top waters as long as you're out here in the morning, you're out here when it's calm and you pick the areas where the fish should be, where they have a spot to go up and eat, and yet they can slide back down. You'll get that mix of largemouth and smallmouth in this lake. I've got both, so I can target both of them in different ways. But either way, you can still get them to bite topwaters even at this time of the year. Go out and do this because, man, I'll tell you what, this is something most people are missing. There is not a boat on the lake today. This is known as a bass lake, okay? It's not much of a walleye lake. I'm the only guy out here fishing bass today. Man, that's fun. That's fun stuff.